ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 261 of the Drunk Dashers Podcast. I'm your host as always, I'm Tyler, and joining me, we have the man, the myth, the legend himself, Sir Colonel Gables. What's up, buddy? Hey, Tyler, I am doing pretty freaking good this week. Got to admit, man, doing a whole lot of the routines, the daily exercise routines have been going pretty well. Plus, I'm feeling pretty good today, because uh, a few minutes ago, watching a little bit of the rest of the Oakland A's games, you know, rest the Oakland A's game against the Red Sox, to be exactly, and... They scored a no-hitter. Shamanaya, pitcher for the Oakland A's, scored a no-hitter against Shamanaya. one of the best teams in baseball right now. So, hell, early in the year, and already we got a no-hitter. So, damn, I'm happy about that. Yeah, that's cool. Awesome. Uh, I don't think anybody had the Oakland A's or Shamanai from uh, the A's uh, getting the first no-hitter of the season. Oh, I know, right? Whoever, whoever did the bet on that in Vegas probably is a very rich man now. What I know, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, well, it's not the most unlikely of no-hitters, though. I mean, uh, yeah. But, uh, true. anyway, other than that, though, I've been doing all right. I haven't been really, like, delving into any, like, new, new games or something like that. I'm still pretty much on my Pokemon fix. Mm-hmm. But other than that, though, it's like, I'm doing fine, man. How have you been doing, Tyler? Uh, I'm doing all right. I uh, had a, a rare Saturday off, and it coincided with uh, God of War coming out, which we'll get to in a little bit later. But um, been an okay week. Uh, you know, same old, same old. Working, a little, getting like it's getting a little slower now. So, not working a crazy amount of hours. A little more time in the game. Um, I did real quick. I think I've kind of given up on Far Cry Five. Uh, you think you have already? Yeah, yeah, I think I was starting to realize I'm not really having fun with this game. I think I'm just playing it to play it and just mm. beat it so I could be done with it more than actually enjoy playing it. So I just kind of I already deleted oh. it. Off my, yeah. I bought it digitally, so I already deleted it off of my, uh, my PS4. Um, oh man, that's the worst though. It's like when you're playing a game, you think you're having fun with it and stuff, and all of a sudden, after about a couple hours, it just starts to grind and then grind, yeah. and it's like, what the fuck am I even doing? <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm like a little past the halfway point in the game, but I was just, I was realizing I'm like after the first section, because uh, like there's like I said the three sections, and I'm like I'm on the second area, and it's like you're just doing the same thing you were doing in the first area. Yeah. Um, and it looks almost identical. Uh, Montana was maybe not the best choice for uh, an open world because um, everything is just it's just a lot of trees, a lot of trees. <laughs> um, so yeah, I kind of given up given up on that over the week. Uh, but yeah, I mean, so kind of an interesting thing happened. Um, sticking with video games uh, on our video game podcast. Uh, so you know, got a war came out Friday. Uh, I pre ordered it through. Um, Best Buy, like, months and months ago, and I used my Best Buy books because mm-hmm. I have the credit card through them, so whenever I spend money on I get, like, 3% back in points for Best Buy. And so it delivered on Thursday like it always does. It's always scary because it always delivers the day before. Mm-hmm. Um, but I always get it on, on release day, all my games. And then 3, 4 in the morning, uh, I woke up, and I was just like, what, for some reason, whenever I wake up, I wake up a few times every night in the middle of the night. I'll just kind of see if I have like any posts or any text messages and stuff because I get a lot of um, messages in the middle of the night from people from from coworkers and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, same part here. of be, part of being a supervisor, you get a lot of uh, um, bad timing uh, text messages and sometimes phone calls. Um, but I, I just happened to look at my email and I saw a delay for God of War. Um, not coming until Tuesday now. I'm like, well, that's not going to work. And then I find out I don't have to work Saturday. I'm like, well, this definitely isn't going to work now. Um, but anyways, I, so I use my best buy bucks and I I got it for, um, like, so I get, it's like 48 bucks on there. I get 20% off and I use my best buy bucks. I got it for $3 as well as it's going to cost me in total. And, um, I'm like, well, fuck, I might just, I think I might just buy it digitally and return it when I get the, when I get the physical copy back, um, on Tuesday. And then, um, I looked it up and I don't get the, like if I shipped it back to him, it cost me five bucks shipped back to him. Yeah. And they only return, they only give me back the, the money I spent on it. So I'd only get $3 back. So I'd lose $2 shipping it back. Oh. And I'm like, well, crap. I'm like, I guess I'll just wait till Tuesday now. And I'm like, well, I only paid 3 bucks for it. What's what's buying another copy? The Best Buy bucks is essentially just free money. <laughs> um, I told, I was talking to a guy at work about it. And he, I was telling him, like, yeah, it kind of sucks. Like, he's like, I really, like, I got finally got a Saturday off. And I'm going to get out a decent time today on Friday. And it's like, I just, I just want, you know, it's, it's I finally have a chance to actually sit down and play some games, and the game I've been waiting for for months now, I'm not, I'm not gonna get till mid next week. He's like, "Well, 
um, um, and I was telling him I was thinking about just buying a digital copy. He's like, well, if you want to just sell me your copy, your physical copy, when you get it in, I'll, I'll buy it off you. I'm like, I like, I offer to give it to him. I'm like, I'll just give it to you. You can have it, you know, whatever. I'll just buy a digital copy. Just, you just gave me a, uh, a good excuse to buy a digital copy now. So I can mentally like <laughs> say it's okay to do it. He's like, no, I'll give you 40 bucks for it. I'm like, all right, that's cool. Right. So that's kind of works out. I, I almost in a way I'm making $37 off of that physical copy. Cause I only paid $3 yep. for it. But so I bought, bought a digital copy now. Um, kind of, I guess the long story short, um, or short story long. And so now I bought it digitally. I'm going to sell him my copy on uh Tuesday or Wednesday, whatever the hell I get it. There you uh, go. same thing happened to Justin too. When he got his from Am- ordered his through Amazon, I guess, but, uh, luckily his, uh, labo showed up. So, uh, which is the, I think for him, maybe the more important thing. Um, yeah. and I actually been talking to him, uh, Justin actually played through the original trilogy of, uh, God of War games. So that was pretty cool. He actually ah. just finished, he finished up God of War 3 last night, wow. which kind of inspired me to buy the uh, God of War 3 remaster for PS4. So uh, like 12 bucks, I bought that. Um, but that's what's going on in Justin's world, in my world. Um, but yeah, I, I picked it up. I guess we can just kind of smooth on transition into that, uh, into yeah, yeah. not so smooth transition now, since I mentioned the transition, um, into what we've been playing. But uh, obviously, we've been playing a bunch of God of War. Uh, I've been talking about lately where it's like, uh, my problem with Far Cry 5 was like, just finding like a good chunk of time to play it. And uh, like I said, I finally given up on it because I just wasn't fun with it. But man, this game, I, I put like seven hours into this game already. Um, and I feel like I'm I, I'm just touching the surface of this game. So um, I guess for people that don't know, God of War real quick. Uh, main story is uh, now Kratos is in the Norse myth- mythology. So I guess so, like in the world of God of War, um, all the different mythologies are going on like in the same world. So like Greek, um, Christian, uh, Egyptian, uh, Norse, all that stuff is happening in the same world and just different areas of the world. And, uh, so now it's, I don't, I didn't say how many years it's been, but it's been a long time since the, the end of God of War three, where it's spoiler. He, he, he kills Zeus and becomes God of War. Um, the actual God of War. Um, and his, uh, his, his wife, uh has has died and he has a son named Arteus, i believe um or boy as uh kratos likes to put it i don't think he's actually this boy that's all i ever hear in the game like i don't think he actually ever says Arteus once just boy it's great i love i I like just randomly yelling boy now like to myself (laughs) i was playing the game i was like boy yeah it's really dumb now but it's it's my new favorite thing in the world um so uh but kind of starts off um, like that, where so she's she's already passed away. You're chopped down a tree, and you uh, you you uh, burn her, you burn her body, and they take. And her final wish was to take her ashes to the tallest point of the mountain, um, in the land. So that's kind of the journey that they're on. And now, with, not, don't want to delve into any spoilers because it, it it feels kind of like a Last of Us Uncharted game where it's more it's really heavily focused on the story. And I think as great as the gameplay is. And those games and in this game, uh, the, the story, I think, is the thing that stands out more. And, um, yeah. yeah, so I don't really want to spoil too much about it. But uh, the uh, so someone shows up and knows who you are from your, from before in the original trilogy. Yeah. And one of the coolest boss fights ever in a video game. Like, th- maybe not ever, but at least in this generation, maybe the last couple generations. But a really awesome boss fight. Uh, with this person Ooh. and I don't want to say too much more but uh, that's like the first hour hour and a half into the game this happens and it is incredible uh, but uh, anyway so it's like so it, so he's basically Kratos he's kind of like a hard ass asshole dad um, he doesn't he's not really caring or nurturing or anything like that he's like you want he's like you, you gotta be a man you know kind of kind of dad and um, like teaching him how to hunt and just kind of like keep kind of really kind of reels into his son when that when he when he messes up um and so that happens with with the person shows up and like all right well he's like you weren't you're not ready to go on this this trip up to the mountain but we have to go anyways now so you're on you go on this trip you're on this journey how to go up the mountain uh because there's gonna be a lot of dangers involved in it and um yeah it's just like it I heard a lot of people say it reminds me of Dark Souls, and I play I played a little bit of Dark Souls and a little bit of Bloodborne, um, but from what I know of it, it seems very accurate. Where every fight is not 
this is not an easy game. I'm playing on normal, and I, I've died quite a bit. And it's just like I've died quite a bit just fighting like run of the mill enemies that you're gonna see all the time. Mm. And like you get into a fight with like three or four of them, it can be pretty difficult. You have Ardeus who's with you that um, he'll like shoot arrows. And if you, you like, you basically have like a skill tree too you can use that you can upgrade um, all your weapons or shields, and you can upgrade some of the abilities that he has. And I've I actually worked quite a bit on I focus on upgrading his abilities because um, he can be a huge help in distracting enemies and do, causing damage and stunning them. Um, but he can like shoot arrows and, um, you can stun enemies and do like special attacks, almost kind of like glory kills in a way from mm. doom okay. where, um, you build up the stun meter and you can do like a, basically like an instant kill where it's just like a, you just go into this like, uh, um, pre-rendered attack and it kills them, um, instantly and you can't get hurt while it happens, which is the nice thing in like doom. Like you still got shot 50 fucking times while you're doing this kill but yeah um in this you don't uh, which is great because you get an insta kill and you got like three seconds of invul- invulnerability um but anyways i've been so there's a lot of like like this little side it's so it's a straightforward game but there's like a little side pass you can go on and uh it feels a lot like the um it's it's a metroidvania slash like the new rebooted tomb raider games uh where there's a lot of stuff you can see that you can you can look at, but you can't do it yet. You don't have the things that you don't have the the items, or you haven't progressed far enough in the story to get to that point yet. So I, I'm assuming eventually I can go back to those things. And there's like past, right. there's times I've gone past that's taken me back to the beginning, and it feels it definitely feels like they've taken a lot from the the original, the or the the two Tomb Raider games where like there's like a bunch of different little uh, small area. There are not small, but fairly fairly decent sized areas. Um, that all kind of wrap around each other. And then, like, there's little pockets you can go on to the next area. Um, but, like, you can all, like, you can always wrap around. There's things you can see, but you can't get to it yet. And then you advance further into it. Finally, you get to those points. Um, and there's, like, little little cliffs you can't get up to or things like that. Um, you see treasure chests you can't get to, um, but you get to them later or you find secret paths. Um, so I've been, like, trying to find every little nook and cranny that I can, and I found, like, they even have like so they have like um, I don't know what they call them exactly like ruins I guess, and there are kind of like the tombs that you can find in Tomb Raider, right. uh, that are like they're optional they're side things but there's a lot of a lot of uh, materials and things you can get in there that um, will help you a lot and in the game and I've been trying to every single one I found I've gone into, and uh, some of the best fights are in the in those areas some of the coolest puzzles I found are in those areas so far in this game but um. So a lot of areas like that, but there I found I found like I, I don't know if there's a lot of these, but I, well, I went to this one area, and it's like a, actually a decent size, open almost. I don't want to say open world, but it is open where you can you can okay. go straight to the path you want to go. But there's also like a bunch of side missions, like legitimate like legit side missions and side quests okay. you can do okay. in this game. And um, so I found like five or six in this area I'm in, and I've been just going around. I've been stuck in there, so you can just go to the, the thing right away and just move on. In like ten minutes, but I've spent three hours in this area, and I, mean, I I I think I'm just about I finished it to go on to the final part, uh, or I'm close to it at least. Um, but yeah, it's like I it is I am just want to sink every I want to get everything in this game. I want to find everything, <laughs> all the side missions because all the characters and all the side missions, um, are like they're not like they don't feel like fetch quest stuff like they feel like they matter like there's some really cool like boss fights that i've founding that if you went straight to the game you would never would have got to that point like you never would have seen these things and so far like i said some of the coolest things in this game are things that are off the beaten path and okay. the like it's like the combat is awesome you have a so you have the, let's call it the, the uh, leviathan axe and it's instead of the chains uh, chains of olympus or chains i can't chains of whatever but um so it's just like a heavy melee attack weapon, but the coolest thing you can do with it, uh, with it is it's like Thor's hammer and like yeah. the Thor, um, uh, like the, the movies and stuff like that, the comics. But so you can throw it and you can aim it and you can throw it and you hit the triangle button and it calls it back. And like every single time I throw it, and it comes back to me. It's awesome. It feels so <laughs> cool. And it's so awesome. Um, yeah, I, I have like I played it for a few hours on Friday night, it's Saturday night now. I uh, played it for another five hours probably today straight. Um, there's no loading screens, which and what? the only loading screens you have is when you boot the game back up 
okay. and when you die, and, the, and it's like five seconds. And it, it, this game is absolutely stunning. Uh, I'm playing in performance mode. There's like then there's also like another mode where it focuses more on like it's, it runs in 30 frames per second on either on both modes, but um, you get a steadier 30 frames per second on uh, the other mode. But I'm playing on um, performance mode where it's or not performance mode, but um, focusing more on graphics, so it runs at native 4K. And this game is absolutely stunning. So the fact that it only takes like five seconds to load is insane to me. So it, it makes it harder to like stop playing the game because it just never stops. You're just always going. And it's always it's just one it's one shot. This game is all there's no cuts, nothing like that. So at every point, so it, the camera follows you everywhere you go. Yeah. Um and it's absolutely amazing. This uh I, I'm all over the place with this game because there's so many great things that I want to talk about. And I just want to make sure I'm getting them all in <laughs> without forgetting anything. So as I'm popping up in my head, I'm talking about them. So there was something I was going to say that was really cool, and I already forgot about it. That was like three things ago. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, oh, man, it's so good. And I'm only like five hours into it. I heard it's like it could take you 25 to 30 hours to finish this campaign if you want to do all the side, all the side stuff. Hmm. Um, and like I said, I want to keep finding – I want to find everything. Um, it's difficult. And there's like a – there is a skill tree that you can – like I mentioned, there's a – they have RPG mechanics too where you can buy um, – uh, uh, like new gears, things like that. So you actually have like stats you got to increase. Okay. Um, so I'm like, I want to find all the money. I want to find all the experience points I can get to buy better, better uh, tax and things like that. Cause it's just, it's so much fun. You know uh, what it kind of reminds me of? It's sort of how you're describing it and how the game kind of flows and how it, you know, the experiences that you've gone through so far it reminds me sort of like horizon zero dawn in a way. Mm, yeah. Because there are, Elements that look like they're open world stuff. You can miss potential side missions that may contribute to something like better in terms of maybe better weapons, better skills, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, true. And uh, it sounds like to me that this is a, definitely a game that would take priority over other, say, games that have released in the couple, you know, the past few months, like Monster Hunter or Far Cry Five or something. Yeah. And that, that kind of makes me excited in that way because I've had interest in playing this God of War game. I know because of my Pokemon fix that I've been going on now for like about a month and a half, almost getting close to two months, that uh, it's one of the reasons why I haven't picked up God of War yet. I know it's a great game, and I know there's going to be people, either at work or whoever listens to this podcast is going to be busting my chops about, but I do want to make it a priority to play through this God of War game, at least by the end of this year, because... It sounds like to me this is the God of War game I've wanted to play, pretty yeah. much. It and for me it's like, so the reviews came out like late last week, which mm-hmm. is super weird for um, games for that to happen. Usually it's a couple of days before, the day before, sometimes not until after the game has been out. The reviews right. come out, and I was listening. To, I was listening to podcasts about it. I was uh, reading reviews about it. It was just like. I was at the point where I'm just tired of hearing about this game. I just want to play it. Like the hype <laughs> level for me for this game, like. Uh, the excitement for this, like, for this game, as I somehow have felt since probably, uh, probably since I mean maybe like Mario and Wolfenstein Two coming out, but hmm. I mean this the hype level that you that I felt for this game isn't something that happens all the time. Like the excitement for like, I'm I look forward to playing like when when Far Cry Five came out before it came out. I was like, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. I'm like I'm excited to play this game, and I played and I played it, started playing it. But like this game, I was just like almost damn near foaming at the mouth on like Tuesday. I'm just like, I just want this week to be over. And <laughs> it made the week feel 10 times longer because oh, I was yes. so ready to play this game. And I, I actually hit my table. That's how excited I am. I was to finally get my hands on this game. Cause Oh man, I it, after hearing all that and I was already excited beforehand, but then that just took it to the next level. Uh, Sony first PlayStation exclusive games are becoming like my new favorite types of games to play now. Uh, with like the Uncharted games and like uh, Horizon, Horizon being my game of the year last year, uh, but near Automa, uh, Automata, but uh, yeah, man, like they are like killing it for like the games that I love, like Last of Us, things like that. Exactly. So and it's like to me, like anything they make, even though it's a different studio, it's just, like those are games are probably gonna be up my alley. Outside of like MLB the Show, which I really like the MLB yeah. the Show, but even still, you anyway, know, back to the point. But um, yeah, I mean this game. Oh, man, it is. It feels like it, I, I've said it. I've kind of never really said it straightforward, but I've, I've kind of, in a way, said it. Uh, this has been kind of a weak year so far. I think. 
Yeah. Uh, as far as like new games, right? Where I look at like 2000, I've said it before, like 2018 is like the two best games I've played this year so far are remakes with Burnout and Shadow of Colossus. Uh, Dragon Ball Fighters was an awesome game, but it's not like this is that was not to me like game of the year, maybe top 10. Yeah. Not, not game of the year uh, caliber. And this feels like not only game of the year, but like game of the generation caliber. Uh, it is the first great game of the year, and I don't know if anything can top it. That's exciting, really, to hear about that, because you are right in a certain extent, Tyler. I have personally have felt it myself, because of the anomaly that was 2017, with mm-hmm. all the all of those genre-defining defining games, like the launch of the Switch, games like Breath of the Wild, Odyssey, this and that, and all of a sudden we come into this year, and some of the biggest releases are Monster Hunter World, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. You had like freaking uh, Far Cry Five that released like a few weeks ago, but those games, even though they are good games in their respected genres and people do enjoy them, they're not like generation like defining games yeah. that God of War seems to be aiming itself as, and yeah. people are treating it as such. And that in and of itself, even though that is sort of disappointing, that we are right near almost the end of april (laughs) currently we're like (laughs) like five or six days before the nfl draft but (laughs) i digress this is definitely exciting if you're a gamer you own yourself a ps4 or even convinced or even just thinking about potentially buying a ps4 pro and stuff this is the type of game you want to buy a system for and that excites me yeah, uh, I was talking to Justin. Justin said he went to Best Buy to pick up uh, his brother's copy for him because God of War is like mm-hmm. probably one of his favorite. I love Call of Duty; it's probably his favorite uh, franchise. And um, he said he was looking at that the God of War PS4, and he's like, "I he's like I was tempted to buy it." And I was looking <laughs> at it. And I'm like, if I didn't have a pro, like I have a pro, and I'm like, even I was like, "Ooh, I kind of want that. That looks pretty <laughs> sweet." Um, so uh, yeah, it's yeah, like I said. Like 2017 was a year where everything came out. This year feels kind of like, or like just kind of like all the big shit came out last year. Now everybody's like in reset mode. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's be a good year, I think. But you know, but with God of War, it's yeah, fucking fantastic. And I don't see anything can top it this year. Uh, just knowing what we know, it's coming. Uh, so probably. Spoiler alert for end of December, early January. Uh, God of War, God of War, probably is my game of the year. Um. But yeah, um, it's gonna be one of those games where like I'm legitimately, it's gonna make going to work on Monday even harder than it already is because because <laughs> like, I got a war at home. Uh, I already feel a, <clears throat> a cough coming on. It's it's really gonna hit me with, uh, <laughs> on, in about thirty hours. Um, but yeah, that's that is all I've been playing. Uh, that's all I'm gonna be playing for probably a little while now. Um, awesome. What about you, Gables? All right. Wow. Well, this God of War talk, man, is really making me excited. But you're excited. You feel my nipples. <laughs> I love the water boy reference. Oh god. <laughs> it was a, it was a it was a baseball reference, but yeah, no, it's fine. Oh my god. Well, that ah, you're right. God damn it. It's fine. It's both good movies. <laughs> well, anyway, as I was preluding to before, yes, I'm still on my Pokemon fix. I beat Pokemon Black last, what was it, Sunday. After we got done recording, I did the same thing like I did the past couple weeks, where it's like, I've gone through the entirety of the game, I get to the final section, and then I go through the final portions of the game. When we recorded last week, I had finished all eight gyms, and I was about to do my final trek. I did that. Before I did that, however, last Sunday I spent a good portion of it grinding with a New member of my team. I nicknamed him Bruce, who is this little candle called Litwick. I went through this specific area and I trained him, got him evolved all the way up to his final evolution, which is a Chandelure. It's basically a ghost fire type Pokemon. It's a giant fucking ghost chandelier. <laughs> <laughs> it is awesome. It has one of the best special attacks of any of the Pokemon inside that generation of games. But I went through the final preparations for my team, went through the Elite Four, which, you know what? The Elite Four inside Generation 5, they're nothing to scoff at in terms of uh, strength. 
But in terms of difficulty, I went through two of the four, like some of the, some of like just the leading up to like some of the harder elite four members. I went through a couple of elite four members, just like one, two, three. I started with this ghost type user Chantal, which I just completely decimated with my crooked isle, which that was fun in and of itself. Then I went through this the fighting type elite four member like Marshall or Marsal or something like that. His name is. Oh boy, I just went through all the Elite Four members, and then the final tackle against Team Plasma, which that was fun in and of itself. I had myself a fun time just going through this Elite Four, all the Team Plasma stuff, battled Getsus, battle N and stuff, just to, you know, it just felt like a great experience, because I had some fun times just going through, just building on my party, doing the established stuff, like... My superior slithers and stuff like that. My stoutland, this giant dog nicknamed Iggy, and all this other stuff. But one of the funnest parts about it was I got a chance to capture one of the legendary Pokemon like Reshiram, added it to my party. So as much time as I spent leveling up Bruce to his final evolution, I decided to go through and just bench him <laughs> inside the PC so I can get the legendary Pokemon, who is also part fire type. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, the final battles against, like, N and, and like, Getsis and stuff, they were nail-biters, really. I was literally down to about the final battle with Getsis. I was down to at least two or three, yeah, like, two members of my party left because one of his Pokemon was just one-shotting a couple of my party members to the extent where it was like, okay, one went down, now two, now three. It's like, oh, shit. Now it's time to go and bring in my Reshiram, which... Healed him, went through a couple of fusion flares, and I swept the rest of his party. I'm like, oh my god, that was intense. That was fucking intense. But uh, after finishing Pokemon Black, I spent that rest of that day, that Sunday, just relaxing and stuff. Then later on and stuff, I didn't feel like playing anything else. So I just decided to start on the next game inside the series, Black 2, which is the sequel that released, I think it was like a year or two later, after the events of Black and White. So yeah, Black 2 and White 2. It's a continuation of Generation 5. So what that means, I've started playing through my sixth Pokemon game in a row. <laughs> so in this playthrough, in this playthrough, I've chosen the water type starter, Oshawott. I've given the nickname of Aoshi. Kind of like, sort of like a samurai sort of name and stuff. Because that's loosely what its final evolution is based off of. It's like a, it's sort of a cross between a samurai and a freaking sea lion. <laughs> Called Samurat, ironically enough. Then I have a Magnemite. I captured a Magnemite earlier on in the game. I nicknamed him Magnus. I jokingly call him the Master of Magnetism. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? But uh, the biggest surprise through that entire, the entirety of what I've been going through is I was going to the, the, the Castellia sewers with one of the NPC characters. Because in this one, I was trying to chase after some, like, uh, like, renew, like, Team Plasma members inside the sewers underneath the city. And then randomly, inside of a double battle, I encounter a shiny Grimer. <laughs> Now, the thing about shiny Pokemon, especially if you want to try to encounter them in the wild, it's very rare to do so. In combination of, say, other methods, like, say, shiny hunting, like, just... There is a chance of 1 out of 8,100 and something attempts where you can actually encounter a shiny Pokemon in the wild without using anything. And uh, I've done that four times throughout the past 20 years of playing Pokemon games. <laughs> but, uh, needless to say, getting that Grimer was very special, because I was just this close, like the NPC was literally this close and just, just one-shotting the damn thing, and I'm like, uh-uh, no, throw that ball, That's caught hard. it, it's mine. <laughs> So, obviously, with catching that, I made it a permanent part of my team. And the best part about it? It's one of the best members of my damn team. 
Is it, has he has he evolved to a shiny uh, come muck? muck come? Uh, no, no, that's about eight more levels from now. <laughs> but he's so cool. He's all green. He's like a light green in comparison to like a purple sludge and stuff. Like how Grimer really is. Gave him the nickname of Grimy, and damn, that thing is fun. I've literally gone through the past couple of gym leaders, and it has been my MVP. My MVP, just straight up. I have gotten five gym badges inside the past eight hours of playing Pokemon Black 2. Damn. I know, man. It's it's just fucking crazy. I have went through the first three, like, not so... You know, not so, like, uh, long it didn't take... You know, it took me and stuff. But for the fourth and the fifth, I've literally done it, like, one yesterday, one today. Let's see. I took care of the fourth gym leader, the electric... Pokemon Specialist by basically going through and uh, using a Pokemon that had, like, the move Fake Tears to just decrease her, like, Emolga's special defense. And then I went through with Magnus, pulled off, like, a used Magnet, like, uh, this uh, Steel Attack, and a critical hit and one shot of the thing <laughs> and fainted. And I'm like, oh, good, I don't have to deal with this fucking Emolga. <laughs> as soon as I did that, she went into her... Zebra, or Zeb Strika, or something like that. And that thing is fast, it hits hard with friggin' spark and with flame charge and all this other crap. And what kept me going was I had to revive Grimy and I got it to the extent where I taught this Grimer dig. It surprised the hell out of me that this poison type Pokemon learns a ground type move like dig. They powered up this move. It was originally like a 60 power move in past generations of games, and now it's up to 80. And the best stat that Grimer has is its attack. Hmm. So I used that to my advantage, used Dig, took out her Zep Strike, I took out her Flaffy, that she had those Electric type Pokemon, basically got them through. And then just like about an hour or so ago before we started recording, I went through the fifth gym leader. Defeated all these gym trainers and stuff, and, uh, let's see, I had my water-type Pokemon, Aoshi, go through and defeat the first two members of his team, this, this Krokorok and, like, the Sand Slash. Damn Sand Slash can use a rollout, and if you let that thing set up, Sand Slash. It, that Sand Slash can pretty much one-hit KO your damn team with one rollout if you let it set up two to three times. <laughs> Because every time it hits, it gets more powerful until eventually the damn thing goes and just starts steamrolling, just one-shotting people. So I managed to take out the first two Pokemon with Aoshi, and then when I tried to do the Excadrill, yeah, Excadrill and stuff, knocked out Aoshi, and I had to go inside and uh, go with uh, my Grimer and stuff, which I did get a couple of good shots off, but uh, I had to revive my Water-type Pokemon, Aoshi. And uh, basically, I went through and I took out the rest of that uh, that match, steamroll the fifth gym leader, and nice. now I'm in a position now where I am looking at whew, maybe like the next couple gym leaders being kind of easier because the next gym leader has to do with flying types. Then I got to take care of the dragon type trainer, and then oh boy, yeah, the dragon type and then the water type trainer. So literally, my Magnemite is going to have a fun time with at least the last couple gym leaders. <laughs> I still have no idea how I'm going to take out the Dragon type user because it's only weak to one thing. Well, actually, Dragons. two things: dragons and ice. And ghosts. Oh, ice. Okay. Ice. I do not want to have an ice type on my team because they don't do that great. <laughs> the only thing that they resist is itself <laughs> as a type. It's like so. a ghost. Is it is ghost weak to Pokemon uh, Psychic or is it? No, so. ghosts are not technically weak to psychic, but uh, ghosts are weak against itself, plus dark types, I believe. But with Gengar, you know, that line in first generation, the only reasons why psychic types were powerful against Pokemon like Gengar and, like, Ghastly Haunter is because they were part Ghastly. poison. Because they were part poison type, too. I just remember, I just remember uh, the episode uh, where Ash has to fight the one psychic gym leader. And he yeah. has to go get a. He has to get a. Um, was it was it ghost type Pokemon to? Yeah. You got a, you got a Ghastly, to be. He, yeah, he, he climbed the tower, yeah. or whatever. 
They captured a ghost type in order to rescue his friends that were changed into dolls by Sabrina and her cadabra. So he had to capture a ghost type in order to use, like, its ghost type moves against cadabra. But that was such a bullshit one because it ended up becoming, like, oh, okay, it made her laugh. Oh, yeah, you get this gym badge. Yeah, no problem. Isn't that how he's earned, like, 95% of his his badges? Other than the time he he beat the mill tank, I don't think he's ever actually earned a, a gym badge. He's earned some gym badges, but yeah, you're not exaggerating where most of his gym badges have come as a result of like the gym leaders feeling sorry for him. Like legitimately, like six of the first eight gym, uh, gym badges he earned were like through like weird means. Like he didn't even yeah. actually win the battle. That's very true. It's fucking bullshit. All right. Well, anyway, to finish up like Black 2 and stuff, I am definitely having a fun time. This is probably one of my most memorable playthroughs of a Pokemon game to date because I have never <laughs> gone through and encounter a shine uh, like a shiny Pokemon like that, capturing it, and it ended up being the type of Pokemon I want to have on my team and play through the entirety. That is something I've never done before, and that in and of itself makes it more exciting. But I'll tell you what, I'm more excited after I finish that game because the next generation of Pokemon games I want to replay again, Generation 6. X and Y? <laughs> X and Y. It's yeah. been... It's been since like 2014, and oh my god, I am so ready to play that game again. (laughs) So that about does it for me playing stuff for this week. All right, man. Well, that's cool, Gables. But uh, um, can't actually wait for you to get into Pokemon X because that was uh, really fun to jumping back into Pokemon games about a decade later after getting out of them. Uh, Was was cool to jump into X. It was a good reboot in a way for the. uh, the franchise so yeah curious to hear what you say about it um uh, probably i'm assuming next week or the week after um but i guess it's time to jump into some, some of the news actually and this is one actually you mentioned last week and i totally forgot about it yeah um so i threw it in here for this week but um sega did like a little they had like a press conference thing um can't remember exactly what it was but uh not much about stuff um, like Shemu uh, One and Two is being remade for the PS4 and I think mm-hmm. Xbox as well. It's like forty bucks for both of them. But the kind of big thing coming out of it, I think the real thing we really want to talk about is they announced what they call it because it, it was in Japan the Mega Drive Mini, which will probably be the Sega Genesis Mini. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's releasing first in Japan, no release date yet. Um, but then every uh, then it will release everywhere else later this year. Um, no price, no games announced for it right now. But uh, that, so they're basically doing almost shamelessly a copy of what um, Nintendo has been in the last couple of years with the NES Classic and the SNES Classic. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like I said, no real more details other than that. And it's coming later this year uh, or it's planned to at least. Um, I'm curious, really, because you're more of the uh, retro gamer uh, of, mm-hmm. of the group here. Um what are you what were your thoughts and um what what are you are you excited for this um let me know tell me well let's see as far as this announcement goes it doesn't surprise me sega wants to go and try to tackle this portion of the share considering how nintendo has been so successful with not only nes mini but the snes mini at the same time it's going to be hard if this does come to the u.s to establish this differentiated from some of their other attempts of uh, using the license for like plug and play devices. The last couple haven't had that favorable reviews in terms of sound quality, in terms of like say janky controllers. I mean, yes, they have had it like their plug and play stuff that's compatible with things like Genesis games and this and that. But if we're talking about say a Sega developed, you know, built in console built in a plug and play, that may be different in terms of uh, quality and in terms of, like, the amount of games you may want to play, you know? Because when it comes down to it, if Sega is producing its own type of, like, uh, little plug-and-play console, no third parties are going to be, like, involved inside of it, that makes me a bit more excited. Not only because of the quality aspect, but it's going to be games that are just cherry-picked that uh, made people want to play the Genesis to begin with. Now, inside the past, like, uh, iterations of, say, these plug-and-play devices, you've had access to, say, like, the Sonic games, the Streets of Rage games, certain Fantasy Star games as well, Golden Axe, you name it. 
But for this, I am sort of excited to see it come out to the market because it kind of sounds crazy that they would not bring it stateside. So in that aspect, what I would most look forward to is to see the price of this this plug and play system, the games that are going to be announced for it, and quite essentially, like, is this thing going to be releasing this holiday? Is it going to be like in 2019? You know, it's just it's a little bit of exciting stuff that's going on there. But uh, yeah. personally, if I had to guess the type of games that are going to be on it, you're going to have mainstays, say like Sonic. You know, like maybe like a Streets of Rage two. God, just like any type of popular Sega Genesis <coughs> games that were at the time. You know, it obviously it's going to be things like maybe Rise Star, maybe Revenge of Shinobi, you know, just, you know, just little things here and there. But what do you think about it, Tyler? Um, my thoughts are kind of the same as it was with the, uh, with the Nintendo Classics, where it's like, it's cool, I'm glad it's a thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Not really my thing. I mean, I, I get, I got bought up into the hype where I tried to get an NES Classic. And yeah. I actually bought an SNES Classic with the European version, which I sat literally sat here on the uh, little desk next to me for over two months before I finally just gave away for Extra Life. Um, <laughs> where, you know, I, I got caught in the hype because it was so hard to find. And there's been a few times now where I've had a chance to buy SNES Classic, clicked on the link, got to the part where I was, gonna, like, I was two button clicks away from buying it, and then I stopped myself. Um, so... I don't want to sit there and say I'm never going to buy this thing because if it comes out and it's super hard to find, I could see myself getting caught up into it and buying one. But I was thinking about it. I mean, I, I really didn't think about the price part part of it. But say the price wasn't really, you know, say it was like 30, 40 bucks. It was a reasonable price. Right. I was trying to think of like what's what. And I don't want to make this like the the fanboy, Nintendo fanboy podcast. And I hope people that don't listen to us regularly won't take it like that. After I just praised God of War for um, ten minutes, um, <laughs> but Nintendo can do that with like they can have a classic system for every console they have, other than maybe the Wii U, um, even though there's some great exclusives on there. But they can do that because of, of their first party games and their exclusives. And I'm just trying to think like, so say they do all the big exclusives that were on the Sega Genesis, the Mega Drive, whatever you want to call it. Um, you got what five Sonic games with like three Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic and Knuckles, Sonic Spinball, three Streets of Rage games you can put on there, Fantasy Star games, um, Golden Axe. Um, if you want to do it as kind of a cool novelty thing, uh, Mortal Kombat, because uh, that was kind of a, the big peep thing that pe pushed people towards the, the Genesis in the first place. Yeah, because they had blood. Um, I'm just like, what what are the big like all timer games that we love that people will rebuy over and over again um other than those games i mentioned um that they can that people can put on there i, I just like i said like there is every every nintendo console from nes on has um one at least one or more classic all-time great mario games zelda games Metroid games. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, so... And sometimes multiple cop multiple versions of those games. Um, and I'm just trying to think, like, what is what does Sega have? Okay, uh, other for... than, like, some maybe some third-party games. What can they put on there that's, like, exclusively... Like, when you think, like, great games, you think that was only on Genesis. Okay, okay. My question to you, Tyler, is, like, first... Like, how familiar are you with the Sega Genesis in terms of, like, playing it, in terms of, like, what the games that you had access to and stuff? Uh, I had one back... Yeah. Like, I didn't have yeah, one yeah. when it originally came out. I had one in the late 90s. Um, I, think I had, like, late, I had Super Nintendo as well. But, like, I mean, that was what... I, that, that's when I, when I think about that. That's what I played. I played Streets of Rage. Um, at that... I mean, at that point in the 90s, that was one of my all-time favorite franchises. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, they had the Sonic games on there, obviously. Like, I mean, pretty much the things I just mentioned. Uh, Beavis and Butthead. Uh, like, but those are the games I, I like, when I think of the Genesis, those are what I remember. And I, I, I mean, yeah. I'm not the retro guy like you are, so there's probably some games that uh, maybe some, like, retro games would, would love. But I'm just trying to think from, like, a casual standpoint. Outside of, I mean, maybe Sonic is enough. Right. If it's a, a good price point, uh, it could be a good impulse buy. But I'm just trying to think of, like, what 
things can people like see on like when I look at the back of the box, I see all the games are on there. How many games are on there? And outside of those those handful, like what are the other games people are gonna jump into play? You make a good point. From a casual point of view, the audience is going to be more interested in playing this sort of plug and play Sega Genesis classic as it is, or Sega Genesis Mini, are gonna be those that grew up with this or may just be interested in seeing what the Sega Genesis is for the first time. And the games that are most recognizable for the Genesis inside of that time frame, you were looking at games like Altered Beast, you're looking at games like Sonic the Hedgehog 2, because that one supposedly is like the best, technically the best one out of those four, apparently. Yeah. Then you have games like Streets of Rage 2, which that was fantastic. Revenge of Shinobi 3... I would think that not a lot of people probably have heard of the Revenge of Shinobi games, but that in and of itself is a fantastic game. But uh, you are right when it says that some familiarity for some of these games may not be as recognizable, especially if, say, they're looking at a box and like, oh, God, what the hell is Ristar, you know, this and yeah. that, you know. Whereas, like, some, <laughs> it's like some, game, some gamers like myself who have gone through and played a lot of these games, not only on the Genesis, but, like, through the collection stuff. I mean, on Steam, you can go ahead and download, like, uh, for how much it was. I mean, I got it for, like, a sale of, like, 15, 20 bucks or something. This whole Sega Genesis collection stuff where it's, like, you got Dynamite Heady, you got Decap Attack, you got, like, uh, God, all the Golden Axe games, Fantasy Star 2, 3, and 4, like, all these classic Genesis games inside there that would be recognizable for people who have probably played them back in their youth. But yet, it's that type of appeal for the Sega Genesis that I would agree is lacking in terms of, say, like what Nintendo does. Because even though the Super Nintendo, when competing against the Genesis, it did have more of a vast library in terms of recognizable games that people would, you know, they, you know, they label that system. This is the Super Nintendo experience right here. These are the games, this is that, and a lot of them. Are still recognizable to this day. It's you know in comparison to some Genesis, but I would think it would be more surprising. I think that we would not just be more surprising. I think we would be surprised at the amount, like that, some of the casual audience would recognize in terms of say some of those Genesis classics. You know, but yeah, I'm just trying to think of like another thing. I was just I just thought of was uh, with the, with like the Nintendo classic systems they brought back at like. Oh, yeah, like I said, Mario, Zelda, Metroid, like all of those games, Donkey Kong, all of those games have had like great games, and they're still super well-made games yes. to this day. Um, Metroid maybe not so much because it's been a while since we've had one, about a decade, but it's easier for like someone that's about our age or a little older to sit down with their kid and like, hey, this is the Mario I played. Um, like, hey, you play Odyssey. Well, here's here's Mario Brothers I played when I was your age. Oh, hey, here's Donkey Kong Country. Here are uh, you played uh, Tro Tropical Freeze. Here's here's Country that I played when I was your age. Here's Metroid on NES yeah, that exactly. I played. Or Super Metroid. You played Metroid Prime Three. Like those games, like those those franchises that are selling these classics from Nintendo are still great franchises to this day. Well, yeah. Um, you look at, like, the key ones for the Genesis were Sonic, I mean, outside of Game Grumps playing shitty Sonic games, like, that's yeah. probably the most, that's, like, the biggest claim to, the biggest claim to fame in Sonic yeah. Mania in the last 20 years. Streets of Rage hasn't had a new game since Streets of Rage 3, 25 years ago. Um, Golden Axe, no one's, there hasn't been a new Golden Axe in 25 years. Right. So, those franchises are not like they're not going to sell to i mean obviously this is going to be a thing that it's going to sell to people in their 30s and stuff like that but i mean it's not going to have the same kind of interest i think from the millennials uh that maybe the the nintendo classic consoles did um right but right i don't know i mean i think it's a, i mean it's a cool thing to have i think it, it'd be it'd be um it's cool it's it's cool to releasing it like i said it's, it comes out the right price uh it, it might be kind of be it would be cool just to have it just from like a cosmetic thing i think it'd be cool to have on a shelf mm. um much like i thought that having the uh um the snes mini uh european version was really cool because i actually had that that controller with the colored uh abxy on it um I back like in the day controller. yeah <laughs> no, that's the i was more interested in the european version than i was the u.s version because i had that controller back in the day 
and but I thought I wanted it mainly just to have it on a shelf because I thought it would look really cool. Um, and that would be my only interest in it, really. Um, I mean, that's nothing I'd ever want to play, but it'd be, I, maybe it'd be kind of cool to jump into Streets of Rage because that was like, I love that franchise back in the day. Um, I would literally beat it multiple times a day for year, Streets of Rage 2, to be exact, um, all the time. Streets of Rage 3 can, can uh, die in a fire, but uh, <laughs> stupid. Once they added the kangaroo, they fucked up. Um, the the kid on the on the roller blades was the was the best player, um, but uh, let's move on. Uh, so we've had a, f- a few, um, not a lot of news really this week, uh, but the news we have had is I think pretty big. Uh, maybe this one to a lesser extent. This one I put in here more for Gables because I know he's a big fan of the franchise. But okay. Gables, did you know there's a new Castlevania game that was announced this week? Oh God, yeah. Oh, yeah, so I you're. Did. Okay, I'm happy that you already knew about it, but on the other hand, I wanted to, to see your heartbreak uh, on camera. But uh, <laughs> so <laughs> there's a new Castlevania game that was announced uh, this week uh, by Konami. It's called Castlevania Grim Grimoire of Souls, and it is a iOS game. So it's gonna be on i on the iPhone. It's coming out later this year. Um, it will include. Um, so this is these are direct quotes from the franchise, or from actually from the press release from Konami to be exact. The new Castlevania will include some of the series' most popular characters from a mo- for a mobile game that focuses on co- cooperative and competitive multiplayer. Uh, Castlevania Grimoire of Souls promises real-time cooperative action, uh, action according to the game's official website, blah, blah, blah. In- excuse me, including a four-player boss rush mode and 4v4 competitive multiplayer. Uh-huh, so automatically it sounds like Harmony of Despair that was on PSN and on Xbox Live Arcade, because that's sort of had a similar sort of effect, only this is kind of... That was two-player, like wasn't it? That was sort of like two-player-ish, but you could have upwards to like about six to eight players, but the difference oh, okay. is that you could explore the entirety of all these maps and stuff like that, but... Uh, this is not that. <laughs> no. This is much more streamlined, and quite honestly... Hashtag fuck Konami. This is nothing <laughs> that any Castlevania... Not, I wouldn't say any. This would not be something that, say, a fan like myself wants to play at all. Because it's... No. Uh, it's just another example of Konami using it in its licensing IP. Which, by the way, they did lose the license to one IP this week. <laughs> Please tell me it's Metal Gear. Please tell me it's Metal Gear. Please tell me it's Metal Gear. Not the IP. I I actually said the licensing oh, God damn it. of sports. Oh, of the FIFA? soccer game. Oh, okay. No, for Pro Evolution Soccer. Oh, Pro Evolution. Yeah, whatever. So that's in and of itself kind of a karma thing in and of its in my honest opinion. But yeah, I am not too happy with the fact that there's a Castlevania game on iOS as almost the same thing as I hated the aspect of the thought that. There is a Metal Gear Solid 3 pachinko machine in Japan. Oh, still hurts me to this day. And of the same thoughts of them canceling Silent Hills with Kojima, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, I have nothing but disdain for Konami in their current game forms, especially with Metal Gear Survive this year. I mean, seriously, what the fuck? You're going to charge money for a fucking extra save point? Ten bucks. <laughs> fuck Konami. God damn it. Now I'm mad. Now I'm depressed and mad again. Well, that's just the thing, though. It's like, with this company, it's like they want to make games. They want to do it in the absolutely most scummiest way possible. And in terms of their IPs that were once cherished, they want to go ahead and just slather them inside the grease of whatever type of pit stain freaking suits that they're wearing that day. And they want to go ahead and roll them around in the mud until it's unrecognizable. So it's like to that extent... What I'm thinking of, whenever I think of Konami now, I'm just thinking of a gigantic dumpster fire that's burning every single one of those franchises that you loved playing as a kid. It's like, oh, hey, you like Castlevania? Well, here, here's a stripped-down experience on mobile. <laughs> but anyway, Epic ran aside. I'm not happy. So, that's it. <laughs> I just thought of Metal Gear Solid Five again. About how that's, like, one of the greatest games of all time, but still, yeah. Yet. It's like half a game, and because of Konami, it's never going to be finished. Yeah, and that's very Kojima's, true. Kojima's last game. Now I'm depressed again, so <laughs> that sucks. Fuck Konami. 
<laughs> Man. I feel like I was just like kicked in, in the balls there, Gables, by your rant. <laughs> well, you know what? That's They're just like... kind of that's kind of the after effect of like a date with Konami, you know? Yeah. You know? Like a first date or something like that is blind date, everything's going all so well. It's like going on a date with Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> no. oh, oh. What the fuck, <laughs> Tyler? Is that where you're going? <laughs> Was that the analogy you're not going to for? Not to that extent. Oh, okay. You're not gonna, you're not gonna freaking fondle you with the fucking. Whistle. You're not gonna, you're not gonna slip Spanish fry, uh, Spanish fry, Spanish fly into my drink. Oh God. I feel like that's what's happened with Konami. They're like the Japanese EA, but with less soul. Oh my god, that's they're a like, good analysis too. They're that's like the comparison. ginger Japanese version of EA. Oh god. Hashtag fuck Konami. Well, there are some similarities between the way Konami does business and what EA does. And Bill does Cosby? Oh, okay. <laughs> god damn it. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, I I absolutely just despise Bill Cosby, but oh, Maybe god. Bill Cosby runs Konami. Maybe that's what we're figuring out here. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> and we gotta get some jello pudding in the mix anyway <sighs> oh boy oh my god we I wouldn't play that. we weren't really dark there uh, oh <laughs> i apologize in advance listeners this is probably the darkest that we're probably going to get with this podcast this week and no no, <laughs> we, no there was that episode there where jake um uh reviewed uh what was that xbox live game the uh alan wake when he went into the darkness, that's the darkness. <laughs> <he's done. laughs> oh my god. That was the darkest we've ever gone. But, um, no, that's like episode three. Uh, <laughs> god damn it, that reference. Oh. Yeah. Uh, people don't know. If you've been listening to us for a long time, you get that reference. It's really, you're laughing hysterically. Gables is crying. You'd also be crying if you listened to us for like five years now. Uh, but anyways, uh, moving on. Uh, we're going to hard segue out of Jake, Alan Wake, and Bill Cosby into... Uh, you know, if he was with us right now, he'd be fucking furious that we combined it with Bill Cosby. If we would have mentioned... We, we found a way to sneak John Cena in there, he would have race quitted already. <laughs> oh god, that's true too. I wonder if he's listening. He's probably not listening. No. Um, huh, anyways, moving on uh, to some uh, a couple of battle royale topics here. Um, okay. So from probably two of the biggest franchises in gaming today. Um, first up, uh, Dice, who uh, makes the uh, uh, I think they make the Battlefield and Battlefront games, the Star Wars games. Um, yeah. But they are working on a, pro- a battle royale prototype. Um, for what the Battlefield Five engine, which technically hasn't been revealed yet, um, Battlefield V, Battlefield Five is supposed to take place in rumors uh, in uh, World War Two. It launches this fall. We know for for sure it's coming this fall. And right, um, EA has already released that much about it. But um, so from from the article that has been coming out from it um, on I think um, Polygon or Kotaku, I can't remember which one, uh, but. The uh, studio is allegedly looking into how it could make such a mode work with Battlefield 5's mechanics. The report also states that even Di- if DICE is satisfied with what it has, the, the mode won't be ready in time for the launch um, this fall. Uh, the source also tells, uh, oh, Adventure Pete, who's who it came from, uh, if the mode uh, does get approved, EA could decide to release it as a free update, hold it off, and include it into another project instead, like a new Star Wars Battlefront. Or just make it an entirely new standalone battle royale game. Um, and uh, real quick, uh, we'll, we'll touch on us a little bit. There's more to talk about with with Black Ops, but the uh, new Call of Duty Black Ops, they're also working on a battle royale mode. So, like I said, the two probably the two biggest franchises in gaming right now um, are looking at potentially having battle royale modes. Boy, oh boy, this has become the new gaming trend of 2018 here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's um, it's kind of crazy to think that like, over the last like really the last 
you look at the last decade, really since the beginning of last generation, yeah. where really the trend centers for um, for online gaming have been like the AAA games, like Call of Duty, Gears of War. Like you look at like everybody trying to mimic Call of Duty Four, yeah, uh, Modern Warfare. Uh, everybody tried to um, if you were like a uh, a lower budget game, they just basically copied Gears of War mechanics. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of crazy to think that like, everybody was always in catch up mode to those to those guys. There's always AAA that was setting the standard. Bioshock AAA game, like they set the standard for uh, single player uh, story driven games. Um, and now we're like getting into like the last few years now, unless you know, and um, where it's it's a little easier to find some of the some of the indie games. Indie games now are like now there's like these whole like AAA indie games in a certain extent. Yeah. Um, now there's now they're the trend centers almost in a way. Uh, not only just like like some of the best games coming from them, but uh, the games that are like they're setting the market. Like with PUBG, uh, set the market last year. Um, and then now Fortnite has actually like they now they've taken over PUBG. Um, and yeah. I talk, you know we talked about Fortnite uh, quite a bit in the last couple months, mostly because I'm playing it, but. Um, it's just crazy to think that uh, Call of Duty and Battlefield, the the two uh, that always like try to one up each other and reset the market and what multiplayer gaming was, is now in catch up mode. Yeah. Um, that's surprising. Yeah, and I'm I'm just kind of curious. Like, the it sounds like the Black Ops one uh, won't be able to do 100 players at least at first. It sounds like they're shooting for 50. Um, obviously, these games are going to be a lot more. Um, they're they're uh, a lot more um, focused on graphic wise. They're they're going to be a lot more powerful. There's a lot more going on with these games. They're a lot more technical. Uh, Fortnite is very much a cartoony game. Uh, graphic wise, it's not like I mean, it looks nice, but it's not like it, it's not going to blow you away graphic wise. PUBG looks pretty good. It's not, not amazing though, and uh, doesn't run particularly super well either. Um, so it's kind of I'm kind of curious to see like um, the next couple of years like are these is this gonna like is, is the battle royale game mode is this gonna be like a thing um, or is, is PUBG and Fortnite kind of be, gonna be the thing and like everybody else is just like how it was last generation where it's like Call of Duty and whatever the big EA shooter was that year um, those are the two big guns and everybody else is just kind of like forgotten about. And I'm wondering if, like, if these two jumping into the market now, is that going to separate things even more? Um, are more people going to jump into these Battle Royale modes than before? Because now it's... Because, uh, yeah, Fortnite's, like, the biggest, most popular thing in gaming right now. And PUBG was yep. the most popular thing. And still probably... They're probably number one, number two right now. Um, but I, I... Like, I have a couple friends that, like, they're, like, the big... Like, they play the big shooter games. Like, The Division, Halo... Call of Duty, like Battlefield, they always play those games. They don't really play anything else. Yeah. And uh, even they haven't. They like they don't know any, they don't know anything about PUBG and Fortnite. And I kind of use those as my compass for kind of like what's uh, going on in like the mainstream kind of uh, for those kind of games. Like uh, since because they've been they're kind of those guys. So it's like when you think of like the Call of Duty Four guys, like the those the, the, that's them. And uh, they have like they have no idea what PUBG is. They know a little bit, a little bit about Fortnite, but they haven't played any of them. And uh, I'm curious to see what they think when that when these games come out later this year, if they have them, or if one of them does, what they think. Uh, I feel like when when I talk to them and a few months after that, I want to know what they think then because I feel like this could that this could be the real make or break moment for um, what battle royale uh, games or game modes can be for the future of this uh for the gaming world i honestly feel that there's going to be a lot of resistance when it comes to these battle royale modes inside of say battlefield or even call of duty for that matter because we have the type of players that play those type of games that they're strictly they just want their experience they just want their key experience that uh, oh this is the call of duty maps this and that this is the type of like terrains that we want, these game modes and stuff. I think they will be, the battle royal modes will be all right. But in the aspect of uh, the whole general scheme of things, I kind of feel like uh, this is sort of like a oversaturation now of this whole 
Battle Royale stuff. I mean, like you were just pointing out to begin with. Like, Fortnite is unarguably the number one game right now that's being streamed, that's being, like, well-known, recognized. It basically, Fortnite has taken over a lot of the media coverage in terms of, like, gaming stuff for Twitch, for YouTube and stuff when it comes to actual appeal. Mm -hmm. PUBG was that way last year to a certain extent, but Epic taking Fortnite doing this and that and stuff has made it even more in the limelight. And now other companies, now AAA companies like EA, like Activision, want a piece of that pie, and they're making their own type of Battle Royale modes. Mm -hmm. And it's just going to be, like like you were just saying, you know, it's going to be interesting to see the reactions of a bunch of people how things are going to see make or break in terms of by the end of this year. But honestly, I personally feel that when it comes to those Battle Royale modes inside those particular franchises, there is going to be a lot of angry people. (laughs) Especially if the next order of news is actually accurate when it comes to, say, Call of Duty, the Modern Warfare, Mm -hmm. like, not Modern Warfare, but Black Ops, next Black Ops game. Yeah. And uh, kind of jump on into that, actually. Um, so Black Ops 4, um, they, uh, so not confirmed, but rumor has it now that uh, this is coming from Patrick Klepik, so I've got to assume that it's pr- pretty accurate. Scoops. Uh, yeah, Scoops. Yeah, he's the original Scoops, him and Jason Schreier. Um, but uh, coming from an article, uh, this one, this is actually from uh Polygon and Kotaku broke it first, but uh, Petra right. Klepek also released... Uh, he was literally working on our article. We are going to release it the next day, and they yep. beat him to it. Uh, but um, So, a lot of sources came out. None of them. They're all anonymous. They don't want to... They're all working on it, but they don't want to say... Obviously, they don't, don't want to stay anonymous. But uh, said that uh, the Black Ops 4 release date uh, approach it, um, is, is, uh, date is approaching... It became evident that development on the single player cam- cam- campaign wouldn't be completed. One source says Treyarch has since focused Black Ops 4 development on expanding multiplayer in the series' popular zombie mode. The source described an emphasis on cooperative as a potential stand in for the typical um, single player campaign experience. And then also, like I said, now um, since they found out that the, the campaign wouldn't be completed, they um, are working on the Battle Royale mode, which we've already talked about. But, um,. You know, it sucks because it was funny the last time Justin was on the show a couple months ago. Like, we were, like when this first kind of rumor that Black Ops 4 was going to be a thing. Uh, like, I went from not caring, to, and I've mentioned it before, like, went from not caring to, like, now I'm hyped for Black Ops 4. Now I'm, like, legitimately, like, <laughs> excited. Can't wait till May 17th when they're going to finally reveal the game. And now this kind of comes, it's kind of a kick in the gut. Um, almost like, you know, uh, going on a date with Bill Cosby. Uh, where... Um, <laughs> You know, like they're going like back to basics. Cold, they're going to the Cold War. Uh, that that campaign can be awesome. If they they go back to with those characters in that world, and now to find out um, that that's not going to happen. And it's almost interesting in a way where it's like this is going to be the first Call of Duty game uh, where it's funny in a way where like we remember Call of Duty games by um, their campaigns. Like we remember Modern Warfare. Like re like like we we said with the last on the last uh, story where yeah. they, they they set the standard. For um, uh, for gaming, where like they had like the they had a great multiplayer mode, yep. and it, it set the standard. But also they had this awesome, amazing uh, campaign that also kind of like reset the board for how um, these first person shooter games um, are made. And still to this day, like that 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 campaign that style is being copied, and there's still people trying to redo it. And you look at Marvel Warfare Two and uh, Modern Warfare 3, Black Ops, um, Advanced Warfare, like, uh, Infinite Warfare, like, people remember, um, Call of Duty 2, uh, World at War, um, WWE 2, people will remember, like, the Call of Duty games off their campaign in a weird way, mm-hmm. or when people talk about it, like, they talk about those campaigns, um, not so much the multiplayer mode, like, the multiplayer mode is the multiplayer mode, obviously there's up and down years, people, a lot of people didn't like Infinite Warfare, it took too far in one direction, um, well, even Ghosts, <laughs> yeah, go. No one, no one played Ghost. Um, no one just gave a shit about the Ghost. Um, other than the dog, that was the only part that mattered. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> so it, it's a it's a huge bummer because like I like playing. I haven't played WWE two yet. I heard it was okay, uh, but um. It's just it's a bummer, like, cause that's the only reason. Like, I think a lot of people, and even the gaming industry, like, obviously, uh, and Call of Duty is probably the still the biggest um, franchise out there today, um, going. So I think they'll be fine with this. But I look at it more personally, um, it, it it just kind of like, any interest I have in Call of Duty uh, is literally some Black Ops Four is gone, and it sucks. This is the most excited I had been going into a Call of Duty game in a long time, probably since Black Ops 2. Uh, like, there's other ones I've really enjoyed coming out, but I had no to little expectations for. And this one, it's kind of crazy where, like you said, where they said um, in the article, became evident development on the single-player campaign wouldn't be completed. So it feels mm-hmm. like this. they were like, uh, at a certain point, who knows when, but they're like, this wasn't like a decision, like, "Hey, we're not doing single player anymore. That we're going to focus on this now." Um, it seems like they were there. There's there was one being made, and they're working on it, but it's not going to happen, um, which is crazy to think. But I'm wondering. I, I'd like. To, I want. I want to see like the the breakdown on the budget for these games because I, I got to think that the uh, the campaigns probably got to be. Just as much, if not the most expensive part of the game, as anything else. Yeah. We look at getting all the actors in, the voice acting, and it's not like they just get like run of the mill voice actors. Like they get some of the, the top notch people in the industry, and then they get some of the most popular people in Hollywood. Like they got uh, Infinite Warfare, they got Jon Snow from Game of Thrones. Uh, Advanced Warfare, they got, um, I forgot his name, from American Beauty, uh, Kevin Spacey. Uh, at that point, he was the most probably one of the most popular people uh, in Hollywood, just because of uh, his on the TV show he's on or was on. He got fired from. I can't remember what it's called now. House well, of Cards. House of Cards. Thank you. But like they get like they've been a, like they got Ice Cube and Black Ops. Like they get yep. like some. They always get big names for their for games, and so you got to imagine it's not cheap. So if I heard the news like, hey, we're not doing single player or at least for this game. We're just going to focus on uh, multiplayer. Like, like ah, you know, it's, that sucks. It's a bummer, but I get it. This one is just kind of crazy from the fact that, like, it sounds like they are working on it, and it's just not going to happen now. They just kind of pulled the plug on it, and now they're going to focus on And they're pivoting in a way to, and they're trying to scrounge together a battle royale mode, and now they're trying to figure out how to make the uh, multiplayer bigger and better than it ever. It's not like they're going to have to, like, Make the, the the multiplayer bigger and better than it ever was before without making this feel like a half-assed uh, Call of Duty game. Yeah, this is not. This is something that I would think is uh, kind of concerning in a way, because not only did they had a single player in place that they wanted to do, but they scrapped it in the middle of uh, the fact that they scrapped it in the middle to focus upon a battle royale mode, which kind of suggests to me is. They kind of saw the trend of how PUBG and how Fortnite have been doing in 2017, and they just decided, you know, it's like, hey, you know what, we're just going to see what's going to do with the most bang for our buck here. We're just going to cut this out, and then we're going to try this, you know. it's It kind of leaves me with a feel that, what are they doing in terms of, like, say, the quality control then, if they're going to focus in this way? Another thing that kind of brings up to mind is, how much is this game going to cost? You know, uh-huh. it's like the single-player experience... At least to some of the Call of Duty community, was definitely some to look forward to. Obviously, the meat and the potatoes is the online mode stuff, the competitive multiplayer, the this, the that, the whole competitive like money pools and stuff like that that uh, the tournaments bring in and stuff for competitive COD players and stuff. I'm just wondering, are they going to charge a full sixty dollars not having a single player campaign to a Call of Duty game? Or are they going to go ahead and just try to micro, just like just have a bunch of micro transactions, have a bunch of other type of crap? Because uh, yeah, even with the last Call of Duty, they did in aspects like had certain things like loot boxes and this and that, even though it wasn't as widely reported in the media as much as say EA with Battlefront Two and this stuff. But uh, there are a bunch of questions now with this next Call of Duty game. <coughs> Especially the questions of 
what is going to be the quality of the game on launch. Because yeah. even if they go through and launch this game, there's going to be a lot of hiccups they're probably going to have to fix, considering that even games like PUBG and Fortnite, they were not to an extent that they are today in the span of like a month. Because that's the average span that a gamer is going to go and spend online and stuff. The first month is critical for a game release, especially if it's online focused. So they do they do have the benefit of having like a huge community, like a huge fan base that will eat up anything Call of Duty, Activision does. But uh, as far as like say... Oh, how well this game is going to do. I mean, I'm just waiting to see what's going to happen with this. You know? Come to unveil, what's going to be the reaction? You know? Yeah. Um, I, I was thinking about that, too, going back to what you said earlier about what, what is this game going to cost. And I remember, so the last Call of Duty game that came to the last consoles, PS3 and Xbox 360, was Black Ops 3. Yeah. And that version didn't have the campaign on it. And they still charge fifty bucks for it, which so they bullshit. <laughs> already kind of put a price point on what that what that campaign is, uh, and you gotta think since it's you know that was f- three four years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, was it Black Ops Three? I'm pretty sure it was Black Ops Three. But anyways, um, so that since they've already put a price point on it, um, and like I said, it's been a few years. Uh, they're gonna probably still charge sixty bucks for it. Especially since they're gonna like they're gonna do a PR thing where like hey, and they're gonna spin it and sound like they we were focusing we put more effort on into the call into the multiplayer mode because we know that's what's most important to gamers and they're gonna show us some things that they did and if the uh-huh. call if the battle royale mode is up and ready to go they're gonna focus on that and they're gonna charge sixty bucks for it I've, and oh yeah it's, it's Call of Duty they can get away with it it's not a big I mean in the grand scheme of things it's ten bucks. Um, whether or not you know you think it's bullshit, that's up to you to decide. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It, like I said, it sucks for um, for someone of my ilk, where Call of Duty game like the campaigns like ninety nine percent of what I play for for them uh, yeah. anymore. Since really Black Ops one, I really have, I kind of stopped caring about online. Um, yeah, I'm curious. I, I, I'm curious what the public opinion will be uh and you know like i said may 17th where they're going to officially show off the game for the first time uh, i'm sure we'll see more e3 and then obviously in october 12th when the game comes out that's when i'm going to be really interested i want to hear what the public opinion is yeah. from the from the gamers that you know the, the real the, the call of duty fans what are what are their opinions those are the things that i want to hear from it, see like i feel like if it comes out and it's like hey yeah like, people were fine with it, it sold super well the um it didn't seem like it bothered anybody excuse me i got hiccups now it doesn't seem like it bothered anybody that the uh, campaign's gone excuse me damn it they're going to keep doing it and um that might be the new market for the call of duty games it's just uh mm-hmm. on, it we're just gonna get an annualized uh online game it, it'll just become uh basically uh, a, a version of you know the sports games in a way um, a little different, obviously, but it's just kind of crazy still to think though, like, cause like not, not only do like the campaign set the market, but also like the campaign's kind of what kind of set what kind of like what world it's, what world it's in. Like, what is it? What, like, what is, why is this black ops for other than the marketing reasons? What makes this black ops for? Uh, why is it in, why is this in space? Why is this in world war two? Why is this, mm-hmm. uh, not, uh, uh, near future why is this uh now you know uh it, that would always set the reasoning why we're like the game is where it is um and obviously there's other games that have been out there uh, that have been extremely folk that done extremely well they don't have a campaign that set like the settings for it um but it's just it's a big departure for the uh camp for the game uh for the for the franchise where uh what made call of duty great was the Original like was the campaigns back in the day before really Call of Duty Four. The what made those that franchise great was its campaigns, and now mm-hmm. they're kind of pivoting away from it. So, uh, anyways, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm like I said, I'm curious to see what what people are people's opinions are in the next, uh, you know, six weeks to six months. But um, 
Yo, know, Gables. Uh, we we got we went a little long this week, a lot longer than oh, usual. Yeah, we did. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that's gonna wrap up the show this week. That's pretty much uh, I think all we got for the week, the for news and gaming wise. Um, I just want to thank you guys real quick for listening. Uh, if you want to hear more from us, Facebook page and group Drunk Nerds Podcast. Like and join us on there on Twitter at Drunk Nerds Pod. Follow us on there on Twitch Drunk Nerds Podcast. Subscribe or not subscribe, but follow and send us friend requests. We like friends, friends are good. YouTube. Subscribe to us on there. Give us a big thumbs up when you when you listen to the podcast on there. It makes it easier for people to see us. Um, and then also on iTunes, subscribe as well. Give us a five star review. Uh, when you do that, more people can see us as well. So the more more people, the more you do that, the more people see us. The more listeners we get, um, the more friends we have. Which we like friends, and friends are good. Um, so once again, thank you guys for listening. I was your host, I was Tyler, and I have been Colonel Gables. So until next time, everyone, <laughs> have yourself a good week. Play yourself some good games, and above else, just have a good life. Too right, Gables. sweet. Too sweet. <laughs> and also, real quick, there is a uh, press square for R- R- RTS and Ghetto War, which is my new favorite thing in gaming. <laughs> Bye, guys. See ya.